Um, so, how did you get started in art? Like, what so what was the, sort of the initial impetus to uh, uh, start drawing? Well, I guess I really always liked drawing. Um, my father is an artist, and so we had a lot of art stuff around the house, and I was really encouraged to, you know, if it seemed like something I was interested in, my parents were very supportive, and um, I just drew a lot when I was little, kind of for no reason, because I liked it. Uh, I really liked Disney movies, I really liked, you know, Pocahontas, and all of that sort of stuff, and then we discovered Studio Ghibli, and I watched Totoro and Kiki's Delivery Service a million times, and then I discovered Pokemon, and I uh, wanted to learn to draw all the Pokemon. Um, and then when I was a little older, manga started becoming a thing in America. And uh, so I got really inspired by, you know, reading manga and wanting to make my own, and I guess it kind of spiraled from one thing to another. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, did you just start drawing manga stuff, or did you try like copying panels? Uh, yeah, I did a lot of. Um, I drew a lot of Pokemon characters. I drew a lot of um, like Naruto and things like that. You know, trying to draw. I always wanted to make my own characters. Also, even when I was pretty young, I had you know, I think I had this character whose name was Summer, and she was like a, a girl with a talking cat, um, which. Of course, must have had no relation at all to me watching Kiki's Delivery Service over and over, which was about a girl with a talking cat. Um, but you know, I I did a little of both. You know, I made my own stuff and then also copied things I really liked. Well, imitation is the uh, highest form of flattery. <laughs> uh, you got to start somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, what inspires you as an artist? Like, uh, is it another artist, or maybe it's just an art style? Uh, or is it something a little bit more specific or maybe something more esoteric? I guess stories inspire me. Um, I'm really drawn to, you know, art that looks like it has a story behind it. Um, I guess I get inspiration from random places. I listen to a lot of music while I draw. Um, but uh, yeah, I've always been really interested in the story aspect of art. Uh, so when you say the story behind an image, you mean... Um, let me try to phrase this in such a way that doesn't make me sound quite like such a <laughs> pleb. Um, do you mean, so is it like the action or the movement, or do you mean just like the whole image um, that, you know, it seems to illustrate a, a story? Well, I mean, for example, with manga or with graphic novels, um, each image is a piece of a story. And I guess I've always been really interested in telling stories through images and, you know, what you can convey through text and what you can convey through pictures and, you know, the combination or not combination of the two. Um, when I was younger, I also did a lot of writing, writing, you know, not necessarily comics, but just writing stories, which I don't do as much anymore. I would like to get back into writing. <laughs> um, so could that be why you sort of moved more into manga stuff? Because of you know, the fact that it, because of what it is as a visual medium, there is a lot of sort of story in the images. I think so. As well as the story itself in text. I really liked, well, when I was younger especially, I really wanted to tell stories visually. And um, not that I still don't, but my work currently has been more geared towards single illustrations just because of work. Um, just the way my work has gone, and it's, it's so much time to do an entire story. For a while I was running a webcomic, but that was sort of for my own satisfaction. <laughs> um, I wasn't being paid to make the webcomic, so that's on hold for a little while while I do other things that are paying work, <laughs> um, unfortunately. Uh, speaking of work, so what do you do? do you, you do like a mixture of things besides uh, teaching, right? Right. I, I, ha I like to say I have like five different part-time jobs. Um, I do art, uh, I do teaching, I teach language classes, Japanese classes, and I also teach drawing classes. Um, I also do translation, I do a lot of Japanese to English translation, some of which is also manga related. Um, I've translated several manga books from Japanese to English for a publisher called Gen Manga, and uh, I also do translations for like the Huffington Post occasionally, and mostly freelance. Mm -hmm. And so how do people normally find you, for uh, for example, for uh, uh, your translations? Um, well, my translation work is mostly either stuff that I've sought out myself or sort of like a standing freelance agreement. 
Mm -hmm. um, so for example, for with the Huffington Post, I am just on their mailing list of freelancers. So if they have something that they need turned around quickly that's not designated to one of their regular translators, then um, it gets sent out to the pool of me and some other people. I actually don't know how many people are in the pool. Mm -hmm. um, and then for Gen Manga, I'm just one of Gen Manga's manga translators. <laughs> Um, um, but a lot of my work, both with art and with translating, is sort of things that I either went out and found or somebody happened upon me through the internet or some other means. Uh, have you gotten any like uh, paid or commission work uh, for your art? Uh, uh, that yeah. Maybe someone found something you made and tracked you down? I've done a lot of very, very random commissions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and by, by random, I just mean things that I wouldn't have expected to do, um, you know, if I was just thinking about, oh, I wonder what someone will commission me to draw today, just kind of unexpected. Um, we do a lot of anime conventions, and one of the ways that I make money at anime conventions, aside from selling posters, is that I do on-the-spot commissions, where somebody will come up to the table and say, please draw this for me, um, and then I draw it. <laughs> um, and some of those requests are quite interesting. Um, really? I mean, most of them are pretty, you know, like something that you would think, okay, like somebody wants, you know, their favorite characters as a couple, or they want themselves and their significant other drawn as manga characters or something. But I think one of the more unusual things someone asked me to draw was um, in the movie Final Fantasy Advent Children, um, there's a box that contains genetic material from this supernatural being. And the supernatural being is female, so somebody requested that I draw the box wearing a dress. <laughs> um, so I said, sure. Um, they never explained why, <laughs> and I didn't ask. Um, <laughs> so um, it's interesting. I've also done a lot of commissions that are not necessarily through anime conventions that were sort of something I would never would have expected. Um, through my deviant art, I got in contact years ago with this fellow who was making a story about ancient Rome. And I ended up drawing a lot of pages of his comic. Um, he would send me scripts and then I would produce the pages based on the scripts. Um, and that's, you know, I didn't know anything about ancient Rome at the time. And the style that he wanted me to draw in was not the style I usually draw in. It was a little bit more American style, a little less Asian influenced. So that was a very interesting experience. Um, how do you like uh, different art or art styles, uh, specifically with respect to stuff like comics and manga? Uh, which one do you prefer, and or which ones, plural possibly, uh, do you prefer and why? Well, my own style is very heavily Japanese influenced. Um, I mean, I. Uh, I was a 90s kid, so I watched Disney movies obsessively, but um, my style is heavily influenced by, like, um, Hiromu Arakawa, who drew Fullmetal Alchemist, and Natsuki Takaya, who drew Fruits Basket. Not that my style looks like theirs, but that's a lot of what I read when I was kind of developing my style. Um, and I guess I'm influenced by artists online also, now that the internet is the internet. Um, but what's interesting, though, is even though I think of myself as having an Asian-influenced style, when I showed my work to people in Japan, they told me that they could tell I was an American. <laughs> um, <laughs> that must have been the... From my work. I mean, they also they knew I was an American because they were sitting there and talking to me, right, but yeah. <laughs> I, they also said, you know, your work looks as though you know, it was not drawn by a Japanese person, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, did they uh, explain why, or did they just um, say... I mean, they weren't saying that it was a bad thing or anything like that. It was just one comment that was made to me by an editor when I was in Japan. I went on, um, or I decided to go on a lot of portfolio reviews in Japan because I was interested to see what they would say to me, and also because they're free. Mm -hmm. um, manga editors in Japan, like with the manga magazines, are very... Um, willing to do walk-in reviews of portfolios for artists, which I think is really cool of them. Um, so I just thought it would be a good idea to, you know, see what they would say and, you know, why not? Um, going through portfolio reviews is a very heart-rending experience oh. <laughs> um, because you're essentially agreeing to sit down with someone for an hour while they tell you everything you're doing wrong. But, I mean, for that reason, it's a very helpful experience. And I went on maybe, like, eight of these while I was in Japan. 
So by the end of it, I was like, oh God, everything I do is awful. But um, it was very, very educational. And I mean, so again, they weren't saying that it looking American was bad necessarily. It was, I thought it was an interesting comment. I don't remember exactly why they said that. Um, I think it was just something about the way I drew. Um, because I mean, Japanese are, looks a certain way. And I think I, now that I'm you know, looking back, I can kind of see what they mean. Um, because I'm sure that my style is, I mean, it's not necessarily influenced by like superhero comics or like that kind of American comic, but it's definitely, I'm sure, had influence from international artists online. Um, so I did spend a lot of time on DeviantArt, especially when I was younger, so <laughs> kind of can't help. You can't help your influences, yeah. really. <laughs> I mean, your influences are sort of your influences, uh, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. I mean, I also watch a lot of American movies, so I'm sure that had something to do with the way that I draw also. Because making comics and making movies are very, very related art forms um, in terms of like the way that you set pages up and the blocking. And so I'm sure the way that my comics look is influenced by American film to a degree. I mean, one term in comic artistry is... The camera, which is yep. basically where uh, the, the panel's positioned in a, a in a scene. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is quite a bit of overlap, actually speaking from personal experience. Um, is there anything in particular that uh, uh, you know gives you a, a, a push as an artist that you see something you go, man, that's really cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess I, I get inspired by movies a lot. Um, I get inspired by wanting to be better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can't, I can't think of a specific example at the moment, but I, there's been quite a few times where I drew something that I really liked after watching a show that I felt really, in, you know, passionate about, or a movie I felt really passionate about, or after reading something that really was like, wow, that was so cool, or... I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. Uh, by when you say to become better, uh, how do you mean exactly? Creatively or technically um, or? I guess both. Um, there was a period where I spent a lot of time drawing from. Um, I have I have like a book of muscles. <laughs> That's like it's like an anatomy for artists book, and I spent a lot of time trying to understand like what what is a shoulder muscle and like so like I felt like I didn't draw backs and shoulders very well so I spent a lot of time drawing shoulders in different positions and trying to copy the muscle structure in which my muscle structure drawings look horrible but it did give me a much better idea of what I was doing drawing people which I think is um for you know anybody who's watching this who's learning to draw I think that's very very helpful and um something that I tell students a lot is that even if you don't plan on drawing realistically, having a basis in realism is very important. Um, because if you're distorting an image, it's a good idea to know what you're distorting from. Um, so like, for example, even with manga, like a lot of manga is very realistic looking, but a lot of it is distorted intentionally in some specific way. Like, for example, really long legs or um, some artists draw very large hands with certain demographics of manga. Um, and that's intentional, you know, they're not drawing the hands too big because they forgot, they wanted them to look big. So, you know, with a lot of things, as long as you're warping a figure intentionally, I think that's, you know, your style and you should go with whatever you think is, you know, that looks the best for your style. But um, having a basis in realism is also important. So I spend a lot of time practicing that. Um, I do a lot of art digitally, and so that there's like a lot of learning involved in learning to transfer into using Photoshop or Manga Studio and what all the buttons do and how to make it look like it does on paper, or, you know, to achieve an effect that you want. Um, and my, or my, the first set of, um, I guess when I, when I initially started working with Photoshop, it was because I wanted to make illustrations to sell in um, anime conventions. And my first batch of illustrations that I made to sell, I am very upset with <laughs> looking oh back. At the time, I was like pretty happy with how they turned out, but looking back, they're pretty, pretty awful. <laughs> um, I, I found some of them. I discovered they were still on my DeviantArt recently, and I was like, oh God, I should get rid of those. <laughs> they're so embarrassing. Um, but I mean, it's still a process. Like I've sort of found a style that I'm happy with, with drawing digitally, but I'm still learning how stuff works even years and years later. So 
So uh, when it comes to styles, you basically try. You tend to draw the, a particular style, mm -hmm. uh, which is the style that you created for yourself uh, primarily, mm -hmm. right? Um, is there any particular reason why you never? Uh, don't mean this to be personal, but <laughs> is there any particular reason why you didn't maybe branch out a little bit into maybe some other art styles as well? Um. I mean, I vary my artwork to some degree depending on what I'm drawing. Um, like some of my illustrations, if it's supposed to look like a famous person, for example, like I have some drawings that are based on like the Sherlock TV show and stuff like that. Um, and those are drawn a little differently than my, like I would say typical style, which is a little more cartoony. Um, I mean, I guess it's just, I, I kind of found something that I felt comfortable with and I really liked the way it looked. And I kind of just kept developing that instead of branching out as much as maybe I could have. Um, and I would like, I think, to learn more about drawing in different styles, but at the moment that hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> at the moment my style is what it is. And I mean, I am very interested in trying different styles. So if somebody commissions me and says, you know, please draw it this way, then I'll be like, sure. Um, but most of the work that I produce either for myself or by myself is a certain way. Okay. Um, I mean, is there anything that you, uh, I mean, is there anything you personally feel like you'd like to be asked of being an artist? Uh, you know, maybe something that people don't typically ask you if they find out um, that you're an artist and you tend to draw manga stuff. Uh, you know, what's a question you'd like to be asked? Um, well, and I guess this isn't really an answer to your question, but if somebody would commission me to draw The Lord of the Rings as a manga story, that would be like a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've always wished that I had the time to devote into doing that. In terms of like questions like about myself, um, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how to answer that. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you don't have to come up with an answer. I mean, it's perfectly valid. I mean, if you just... Uh, no, yeah, I mean, some people are, you know, they just become fed up with being asked certain questions. The same questions, questions you know, or... <laughs> I wish they'd ask me this or this or, you know, um, whatever, but uh, you're not at that point yet. Oh, no. That's fine, so, you know, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, do you have any closing thoughts on uh, what, it, what it is and what it's like to be an artist and you know, some of the things that you kind of have to keep doing in order to uh, keep yourself motivated and, uh, you know, keep yourself fresh uh, when coming up with ideas? Well, like, I mean, it can be tough. I mean, especially in my case, I do so many different sort of part-time jobs and, like, different types of work that sometimes it's hard to, like, keep in with doing art because um, that's not, you know, a lot of it is translating and translating takes a lot of time and um, it kind of depends week to week how much time different things take, but um, I mean, I, I try to keep up with stories. I'm really interested in manga. I'm really interested in movies, and the, you know, those things are sources of inspiration. Um, I guess one thing that kind of serves as like a, something that pushes me is that I feel like there's a lack of, there's a growing lack of creativity in the world <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Um, like, I, I look at a lot of things that are being produced now, um, both TV shows and comics and, you know, any kind of creative medium, and I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> um, and I mean, especially with, you know, diversification, you would think the world would be getting more creative, but I think in some ways, especially like with mu popular music, I know that a lot of people complain about that, but there's a lot of popular media that I feel like is, like, leveled out and people don't push to be creative as much as they could and so I'd like to be a part of kind of keeping creativity going you know as much as you know my my small part as much as I can <laughs> that's something I'm, I'm concerned with is I don't want that to die out so that's a perfectly valid answer for you know for that I mean for me personally you know I feel the exact same way like I you know there have been a few movies that I've seen in the past that it's just like why <laughs> You know, you watch the whole thing, and it's like, well, I knew it was going to happen at every point of the movie, and none of it was interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously someone paid hundreds of millions of dollars to make this, and it wasn't entertaining at all. It was completely unoriginal. I mean...